Hey friends, my name is Oleg. This is Mr. Bond. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. In today's video, we're gonna do a partially review and partially a bit of a torture test on this G-Shock knockoff watch. Now, to be fair, technically this is not a fake G-Shock because it doesn't say G-Shock anywhere on the dial or anywhere on the case. But very clearly, by looking at this watch, you can tell that it's a G-Shock knockoff. It's an homage to G-Shock. Uh, the company name is Sinoki, I think that's how you pronounce it, but there are quite a few different watches like this on AliExpress, that's where I purchased this one. I paid 5 US dollars, including shipping to Canada. It took a little bit of time for it to arrive, I think it took about 4 weeks, but here we are. G-Shocks are famous for their toughness, and that's why a lot of people buy them, they're perfect work watches, they're perfect workout watches, kind of the perfect beater watch for any situation. This watch here, even though it looks a lot like a G-Shock, it isn't a G-Shock. It only has 30 meters of water resistance, which we will test, by the way. So the way this video is going to be structured, uh, the first portion is going to be kind of close-up look at the watch, and after that we're going to test this watch. We're going to see how much can this watch take. I'm uh, going to have some fun, I'm going to drop it from different things, uh, put it in water, and uh, do as much as possible to test out the abilities of this $5 G-Shock. So let's get started with the overview first. Here's the watch in question. The name is Sinoki, Sinok, obviously a ripoff of Casio G-Shock. So the dimensions of this watch, it's quite large. Uh, let me show it to you. So the square G-Shock is 43 millimeters. This watch is 51 millimeters in diameter. That's pretty huge. It also has a pretty big uh, band here and just overall it feels big. For comparison, here it is next to a square G-Shock. You can really see the difference in size. I mean, this looks like a baby comparing to this ginormous watch. I think the square face G-Shock is the smallest G-Shock in the G-Shock lineup. And even then, it's not that small. I mean, it fits well, but it's not a tiny watch. So if you ever held or have tried on a G-Shock, a square face G-Shock on your wrist, you can roughly imagine how big this watch would wear. It is also quite thick, so a regular G-Shock is about 12.2 millimeters in thickness. This one is over 15, I think it's 15 and a half. Big pushers, but the overall feel of the watch does feel quite similar to the G-Shock. Looks like it's probably made out of the same fabric uh, material, if not the same material, very similar. I think it's raisin. Uh, nice big pushers here, something that I do like. A lot of my criticisms for some G-Shock watches is that the pushers sometimes are a little bit too small, a little bit harder to push. A similar case back here as well. Only three atmospheres of water resistance. So I am not expecting this one to survive too many of my uh, torture tests, but we'll see. Also has quite a thick case back. G-Shocks usually don't have that thick of a case back. Like it protrudes a little bit, but not that much. This one here is protruding a lot more. But for $5, it's okay. Here's what it looks like on my seven and a half inches or 20 centimeters wrist. Yeah, it wears large. It is a large watch. It's not too heavy, 52 grams as opposed to 49 grams on the regular G-Shock. So it doesn't have a huge weight difference. For the most part, it's a fairly comfortable watch, it's just too big for my size of a wrist. If you have bigger wrists, maybe you can pull this one off, but if you have smaller wrists or maybe the same size as my wrists, it will probably look too large and oversized on your wrist. I do like this camo color, I think that looks pretty cool, and actually this watch is available in a few different color combinations, something that I think G-Shock should consider, uh, putting their square models. I know they are available in a few different colors, but I mean, these ones are available in so many different colors, including this camo and different types of camo. Uh, let me just show you what these pushers do, because the pusher situation and obviously the movement in this watch is different from a regular G-Shock. So uh, first of all, the overall dial setup and layout is different, right? So let me show you what the pushers do. Uh, this pusher here is pretty much the main pusher. That's the stopwatch. You put, you push the top button to start the stopwatch. Push it again to stop it, and this one to reset it. Uh, then the next one is alarm. So this watch does have an alarm, 
and for a little bit I couldn't figure out how to turn off this alarm and it kept on going off in the middle of the night. Very frustrated, but uh, I figured out how to turn it on and off. And this, uh, this function here is to change the time and the date and the rest of it. So you can see days of the week, date and month, and days of the week there. So that's how you adjust it and then you push it again and you go back to this screen here. So that's the time screen. Uh, the pusher up here is the light. Background light is very weird. Let me demonstrate it again. It kind of shines on top of the screen. It doesn't shine below the screen. It doesn't light up the screen. It just shines on top of it. Uh, it gets the job done, but it doesn't look very good. It does look very shoddy. Uh, this pusher here, uh, that's to look what date it is. And this pusher here is to look at the alarm. Now when you push, push both of these pushers together, that's how you turn on and off the alarm. And that's pretty much it as far as the overview of the swatch goes. The strap is very similar to the G-Shock strap. Not a huge difference. It doesn't feel very good quality. Unsigned thing, buckle. So yeah, not much else to the swatch. Now let's start with some tests. Yeah, okay, so it's quite a bit of traffic here, but it's okay. Uh, so we're gonna do the first drop test. So we're just gonna drop it like from this height. Oops, that didn't sound good. <laughs> All right, uh, no visible damage. Looks okay. All right, so second drop test, we're gonna drop it from about this height. Sounds pretty bad when it happens. Oh, so now there's a bit of damage like on the logs here and a bit on the bezel, but still, the watch works and functions. Yeah, it's okay. Um, yeah, I know a lot of you guys would want me to drop it from my balcony because every comment whenever I do a wristwatch check is, oh, why don't you drop the watch off the balcony or I'm scared you're gonna drop the watch off the balcony. Well, I was thinking about it, but then I thought it would probably be illegal to do so. And if not illegal, my Strata Corporation would be very mad about that because it's dangerous. I live on 11th floor, so I'm not gonna do that. What I am gonna do for the last drop test is I'm gonna uh, throw the watch up in the air, maybe to like second, third story, and let it drop and see see what happens. So maybe second, third floor, drop test. All right. It survived. Just a little bit of scuffs on the bezel here and on this side of the lugs. But yeah, the watch survived. All right, so drop test is successful. On to the next test. All right, test number two is we're gonna submerge this watch in water for 24 hours. The water resistance of the watch is 30 meters, which is basically, according to some people, unlimited swimming. But according to me, you can kind of get the watch wet, maybe washing your hands and things like that, maybe rain but you shouldn't really go swimming with it. The real G-Shock has 200 meters of water resistance, so obviously it has advantage over this watch. Nevertheless, we're still gonna give it a try and see if the watch can survive for 24 hours submerged underwater. So here we go, right now it's 16.08 on a Wednesday. Let's submerge the watch. And we'll wait. It's been 24 hours. Now let's see if the watch survived. All right, it's working. Look at that. I'm not gonna press the pushers yet. I'm just gonna take a towel, dry it up, and then I'm gonna press the pushers, see if everything works. All right, so let's see if the watch is working. Now, obviously the better test for this would be to actually take the watch to a swimming pool or the lake or something like that. But of course, with the lockdown, with the quarantine, all the swimming pools are locked, all the places are closed, so we can't really properly test out water resistance but i think this is good enough i'd say leaving it in a container of water for 24 hours so let's see if the functions are working yeah the pushers are working you can press them all right so it has survived 
test number two. On to test number three. So for the third test, what are we gonna do? We're gonna take the watch. Right now the time is 18.30, so 6.30 in the afternoon. Uh, we're gonna put it in this plastic bag and we're gonna put it in the freezer. So I don't know how scientific this experiment is, but it should probably give us a pretty good idea how well the watch will survive in freezing cold temperatures. So for 24 hours in a freezer, here we go. I'm just gonna keep it on the door here. All right, see you in 24 hours. It's been 24 hours. It's actually been more than 24 hours. To be honest, I kind of forgot about the watch in the freezer, but here we are. Did it survive? It did, it did survive. So here it is. It's really cold and a little bit of frost on top of it, but it's working. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, the display is sort of working, but not exactly. The light, okay, the light is still working, but now the display is just showing all zeros, or now not even zeros. Okay, so it's not really working. I think that's it for this watch. I think it is broken. It can't stand a cold temperature. I'm gonna leave it on my countertop overnight and see if that helps. Maybe the watch will fix itself as it does sometimes. You know, when you have an annoying thing in your car, like it makes noise, it rattles, and then you just ignore it for a while and it goes away. The car just fixes itself. So hopefully that happens with this watch. Not that I do that. I take care of my car very well. But, you know, sometimes. So believe it or not, the watch came back to life. It's been maybe about a couple of hours. I left it on the counter here, took a shower, was about to go to sleep. I checked the watch and it's working. The display came back to life. The light, everything works. So for our fourth challenge, I think this is fourth challenge. What are we gonna do? We're gonna fill this container up with water, put the watch into the water and then put that whole thing in a freezer and leave it over for 24 hours or as long as it takes for it to freeze, probably 12 to 24 hours. And then after it's all over, of course, we're gonna take it out, let it melt or maybe break the ice, depends on how much patience I have with this and see if the watch is still working, if that's gonna destroy the watch. And if that doesn't destroy the watch, I really don't have any other ideas. I mean, maybe you run this thing over with the car or something like that. How do I destroy it? Uh, so let's do that. We're gonna put it in here, fill it up with water and put it in a freezer. I filled up the container with water. The watch is already inside here. So uh, it's not fully submerged, but I think as the ice freezes, the water will expand. So uh, that might cover the watch completely. Then we're gonna put this lid on top, make some space in the freezer, and freeze it over. This is one of the craziest things I've ever done with the watch. It hasn't been 24 hours yet, it's been like about 15, 16 hours, but I think that would be enough to freeze the water. Yeah, that's definitely enough. So if you look at the watch, it's all frozen. Um, now, there are two ways to go about unfreezing this thing. I could leave it on uh, in a sink for a few hours and it would unfreeze. I could put it in hot water that would make it unfreeze quicker. Or I could take a hammer and smash the ice. And I think that will be the funnest way. So let's do that. It looks like it's not completely frozen. There are pockets of water inside and the frost actually looks quite beautiful there. As you can see, some parts already started rusting, like the tank buckle. I mean, I could wait a little bit longer for it to freeze more, but nah, this is gonna be fun. Uh, this might get a little bit loud.
Now, the moment of truth. Does the watch still work? It does. <laughs> this watch is indestructible. The screen is still working. Oh, these are frozen. That's it. The, the light is still working. It's pretty incredible. The watch is still working even after it's been frozen in water for hours and after I broke it out of the ice with the hammer, it's still working. So I don't know what it will take to destroy this watch. Maybe a good old hammer will help. All right, so what I wanna do now, since the watch has survived and it is working, I wanna open the case back and see what's inside here. What is powering this watch? Is it a Rolex movement? Is it a Celita? Is it a ETA movement? Very, very curious. So here's what's inside. Basically a back cover here. And then that's it. So that's the light right there. And these are the other pushers. And then we have this foam part here. It's actually holding down the battery, I guess, when you uh, screw it all in place. It's just holding the movement in place and holding everything together. Because other than this little foam part and the case back, there's nothing else holding uh, the electronics within uh, the case. And here's what the inside of the case looks like. Looks like it's just a plastic ring here. And some pushers. That's about it. All right, so that's what the inside looks like. I don't wanna take this part off because maybe we wanna do a part two of a durability test with this watch. So that has been another episode of Oleg and Bond slowly losing their minds in self-isolation. As far as this watch goes, I'm surprised. It has been kind of indestructible. I mean, there are more tests that I could do. I could run it over with my car or just smash it with a hammer or things like that. But I think that's just a ridiculous test. I mean, obviously it's gonna break if I just smash it with the hammer. I think these tests are a little bit more interesting. So I think I'm gonna Save the watch for now. I'm not gonna completely destroy it. I'm not gonna break it on purpose, so to speak. And maybe I'll do an episode two of this video in the future. So leave your suggestions for other ways I can try to destroy this watch or try to test how indestructible this watch is in the future. Leave your suggestions in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, give a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. That helps out quite a bit so we can do more videos like this one in the future. And as far as recommending this watch, I would recommend it if it was smaller. I think the size is the biggest negative of the watch. I mean, it doesn't have all the functions of G-Shock and of course it's not an original, it's a copy and the original is always better than a copy. But if you're looking for like a $5 beater watch and you don't really care about those things, you just want a watch that will be kind of indestructible and uh, you just throw it on your wrist, this would be a good good suggestion if it were smaller. If you have large wrists, you probably can pull this one off. For me, it's just too big. By the way, to end my wrist, I'm wearing my Omega Seamaster. I did a full review of this watch. That video can be found on the YouTube channel. I will also leave a link to it in the description below. Also in the description below, there are two other links. The first link is a link to bondnatostraps.com. If you're looking for a good quality NATO strap and want to support this YouTube channel at the same time, buying one of these Bond NATO straps is a good way to do so. The second link is a secret link. Have a look if you're curious. Thanks for watching. I hope you're staying safe. I hope you had fun in this video and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. He's very concerned. One is like, silly humans, what the hell are you doing?
water is for drinking, not for watch tests. <laughs>